So Lucas, can you um, explain your connection to Huntington's disease? Um, well, my mum has it. My uncle has it, and it's kind of on my mum's side of the family. So the only people, the only other people I know who've got it in my family is my nan, who's uh, not kind of with us anymore. But it's just kind of my mum and my uncle who have it. And, and um, how are they coping with their symptoms? How far along are they? Um, well, they're both pretty bad. My both of them are in care homes. Um, my uncle's been moved between kind of care homes. He's gone from a care home in Strood to the care home. I don't know whereabouts it is, but um, uh, my mum, she's she's fine. She's gone from being kind of like aggressive to being more kind of docile. She just kind of sits around, but they're both pretty far along. Uh, you mentioned uh, your uncle has been moved around care homes. Uh, what was the reason for that? Um, he developed a personal vendetta against another um, patient. Um, I think one of the things he did is he cut somebody's feeding tube. As you do if you have it. Yeah. <laughs> Not heard that one before. <laughs> um, and you mentioned that your mother uh, used to be aggressive. Yeah, she um, she's attacked me on several occasions before. Um, and then at one point it got to the point where I just kind of thought, that's it, I'm leaving. And I went to go live with my dad. And at the time, were you aware that this was because of Huntington's disease, because she was suffering? Uh, I knew that kind of she had Huntington's, but I didn't kind of blame the Huntington's for her behaviour. I kind of blamed her. It was only kind of after I moved out that I began to kind of go, it's not her fault, it's the Huntington's. But when I was younger, I was just kind of, I used to think it was all her fault. And it was just like, I hate you, Mum. And do you feel guilty about that in any way? Yeah, I do. I mean, there was a few times where we had our fights where she would get to the point where, I would, where I'd fear for my life. And then I'd kind of um, strike back. And then in that moment, I'd feel so bad and she'd, be on, she'd start crying. And then I just feel absolutely terrible. So I kind of, I just wasn't sure what to do. And how old were you at this time? Um, ooh, around, it started around 14. And then when I reached around 16, that's when things started getting very worse and she got more aggressive. And then I moved out around 16, around towards the end, near, near my birthday. So Lucas, when you were living with your mother during this time, uh, was it just you and your mum? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I kind of basically became her carer. I mean, I was going to school at the time, but she kind of required me to be at home more of the time. So I kind of started stopped going to school and started staying at home helping her. And I was just kind of doing things like I'd help her do washing, I'd cook, clean, go out, do shopping. She would expect me to like help clean her sometimes, and when I would kind of refuse, it'd start arguments. And because she kind of she she had carers, but she didn't like them kind of helping her. She saw them as being like terrible. It, it was just her mindset. So I was the only one. You were the only one that she trusted. Mhm. Mm they actually got to a point where she wouldn't let me go to school or go out. There was a very funny moment where I had to kind of climb out of the balconies and climb down four floors. <laughs> So uh, I think it's fair to say that Huntington's disease has affected you uh, educationally? Yeah. I mean, I, there was um, an organisation called the Young Carers um, Organisation. I don't know if you know it, but um, they helped me kind of when I was living there. And then I kind of, when I moved out, I decided that it was about time I kind of sorted out my education. So I got involved in um, a course at Croydon College called Bridge to School, which I absolutely hated, but it helped kind of... Uh, bring me onto the a GCSE retake course and where I am now, which is a course in IT. So essentially you had to play catch up? Pardon? You had to play catch up? Yeah. Uh, so what other ways uh, was HD affecting you and your mother? Um, well, she kind of, she had um, movement issues like mobility, kind of, she would like, she was constantly tripping up, falling over. Um, there was one time when she was out in the street and she just kind of fell over and like scraped her face all along the floor. 
and kind of like men like mentally she was incapable of like kind of like her decision making she if she wanted to cross the road she's crossing the road it's not she has to wait for the cars the cars have to wait for her and so there would be times when there's like cars going vroom, and she's just kind of going no walking along the road um her speech as well um was kind of terrible but it's got worse now because when i visit her she can hardly string together a kind of a proper sentence and there was another thing um her eating and her kind of her smoking where um the Huntington's account, she felt she had to smoke more because she saw it, she was dying anyway. So now with her movements and kind of her eating, her, her smoking, she just kind of, she sets fire to things herself. It's pretty bad. <laughs> uh, and did she get into any difficulties with the law at all in, in this oh, yes, when she was lots. attacking you? Um, we, were, um, you know, we were kind of like very, very associated with the local police to the point that they began to ignore her phone calls. Because I'd go out and she'd try and the police say, oh, he's gone out. And then there'd be times when we'd be having an argument and she'd find the police and be like, he's being horrible to me. Oh, what has he done to you? He didn't make me a coffee. What did you do to him? I attempted to attack him with a pizza cutter. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was uh, one of the occasions. But most of the time, um, the police just kind of was like, all right, we understand what's going on here. Lucas, it's all right. Have you ever thought about moving out? And then there were some times where um, the police would kind of take her side. Um, I remember one time she was um, she was punching me, and I kind of um, I picked up a cushion and hit her around the head with the cushion as my defensive kind of manoeuvre. And then um, the police came round, and I explained to them everything, and then she explained to them, and then she kind of added her own kind of version of events, and then I ended up uh, getting arrested. <laughs> And it was the most embarrassing and awkward moment of my life, just walking in there. So, so what's he in for? He hit his mum around the head with a cushion. <laughs> I hope they didn't charge you. No. Um, my mum said I could, like, she, was, she wasn't going to press any charges. She just wanted me to spend a few, like, <laughs> hours in a cell. It's and then very I, kind of her. Yeah, and then I was just like, Mum, I'm not coming home tonight. I'm not coming home for a week. <laughs> uh, so what was the catalyst for you deciding that you wanted to move out? Um... There was um, this kind of one day where um, we um, had an argument and um, in the morning, something to do with me not making a coffee. And then um, it kind of escalated and then I was just like, you know, I'll just leave it. And she's like, oh, I'm going to get you arrested, Lucas. And then um, about midday, she started like having a go again. And then um, she kind of, she came at me and she um, started like scratching my face and like, biting me and then she pulled a pizza cut she went into the kitchen and got a pizza cut and she's kind of like attacked me a bit and kind of slashed like part of my wrist not like the main wrist part but just the side and then um that night i had two mates stay over so i kind of didn't want to stay there on my own and then she's like i'm going to call the police on you and the police came and they were talking to both of us and it was like we've heard both sides of the story so we're going to arrest you and then i've kind of gone she did attack me with a pizza cut. It's like, we'll go into the next room, just give us a minute. And they've gone in there. And the comic's like, change of plans. She's admitted to attacking you with a weapon, so we're just going to arrest her instead. And then the next day, I was just, I can't handle it anymore. I'm go live with my dad. And then went to move in with him. And is, is your dad supportive uh, in terms of uh, your mother, yourself, and Huntington's disease in general? Um, not really, no. I mean, I suppose I could try talking to him about it, but he's never kind of attempted to kind of get through to kind of me. We don't really talk. About Huntington's disease or just in general? In general. And uh, where do you live now? Um, I'm currently kind of staying at a mate's house because things didn't work out at my dad's. I kind of had arguments with his mum and then eventually I was kind of had to leave and then I had to move in with a friend. And that's where I'm living now. So how do you feel being at risk? Uh, before I kind of, I tried to just block it out, just kind of ignore it. It's, oh, it's not gonna happen, it doesn't matter. And then I had all my friends telling me, oh, you're just gonna test negative, so there's no point kind of going on. But kind of, when I started visiting my mum at the care home, it started to kind of think, it'd probably be a good idea if I got tested. And then I started getting the idea in my head about getting tested. And I think to myself, 
oh no way I don't want to not yet not yet and then I'll do something silly like drop a plate or like just do something like most people would be like oh I'm clumsy and I'd think oh is that HD am I showing really early symptoms and then I'd start building up again I mean I want to get tested just I haven't kind of found the time uh, so at the moment you mentioned that you were living at your friend's house uh, so what kind of support are you getting at the moment? Um, you mean financially or just support in general? In general, uh, financially and to cope with Huntington's disease in general? Um, the only people I kind of talk to Huntington's about are like friends and family. Um, financially, I'm currently only like kind of surviving off my EMA um, for college. I don't kind of have any other actual source of income. Um, the people who I live with, they're 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 good. They're good to me. Um, sometimes there's like problems, of, like with cash and stuff. Me not kind of paying enough because I can't. But other than that, um, if I talk to them about things, they're they're supportive. They they go, oh, you know, as you would. But they're kind of they're not exactly knowledgeable. Do you visit your your mother and your uncle a lot in their care homes? Um, my uncle lives a bit too far away, but whenever my aunt visits, I kind of go and visit him with her. Um, I visit my mum once a week, either on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, because she's um, uh, she lives quite kind of near. It's only about a half hour walk. I've actually only just discovered a shortcut there from where I live walking, where I'd been catching a like tram all the way up and then kind of going oh walk down that way. I discovered another route, which I was kind of a bit embarrassed about. I was like, oh, I've been going all that way for nothing. Um, so do you have a lot, a lot of contact with the mother during the week, or is it just that one day? It's just that one day. And I spend about two, three hours there. And how do you find that? Um, the first few times, it was kind of depressing, just kind of seeing my mum, like, kind of this way. But now I just kind of, um, kind of just go there and I'm just, oh, hi, Mum, just act completely normal. I mean, I think about it sometimes, but kind of block it out most of the time. Uh, you mentioned that your mother struggles to speak. Um, so when you go visit her at the care homes, do you find it uh, difficult to have a conversation with her? Yeah, I mean, when she speaks, she kind of, she'll speak and then she'll say part of the sentence and then the other part will come out kind of really quiet and it's like kind of mum, like mumbling. And then there's also the problem with her memory where she kind of, she's very forgetful. So I could say to her something one week, come back and visit her the next week, she's forgotten it completely. And so it's just kind of difficult to kind of strike up a conversation. And also when she's kind of like in an angry mood as well, where she doesn't like being there, then she's kind of, it's like impossible to kind of talk to her. You kind of got to see it from her point of view. And how does your uncle cope in his care home? Um, I think he kind of, he puts on a brave face. He doesn't, he kind of sees himself as not being that badly affected by it when he actually is. Because um, he, he thinks that he's kind of, he's, he's better than the rest. Kind of, yeah, oh, you know, I've got hundreds, but I'm not as bad as the rest of the people. <laughs> when he is quite bad himself, I mean, what affects him more, I mean, his mind, he's not as far gone as my mum, but movement wise, he's a lot worse. Like, he couldn't walk straight, he can't walk straight, he's constantly kind of got spasms. I remember he was holding my little cousin once, and me and my mum were kind of looking at him, going, oh no, <laughs> don't hold it like that. <laughs> Um, you mentioned your aunt there. Um, is she a support? Yeah, to you? she's she's great. She's amazing. Her and like the kind of direct that kind of side of my family, they're very supportive and great. Because um, I didn't I have any contact with them before I kind of left my mum's. Because my mum kind of said that they were evil. <laughs> yeah, she was always oh they're horrible people. You don't know them. And then I met them, and it's like the complete and our opposite. Maybe they're too kind, <laughs> but they're very supportive of like me and HD and everything. And after uh, seeing what Huntington's can do, uh, especially to your mother and to your uncle, uh, how do you cope knowing that you're at risk? Um, um, most of the time I just kind of, I try not to think about it. I mean, I haven't really kind of got a like plan or anything. I just kind of, 
I'll just kind of go. <laughs> just kind of sit, like, take it as it comes. But um, I suppose the idea of it, you know, I get, I know that if I did have it, I'd be gutted. But, but yeah.